with uh, dividing into different teams for those competitions, you know, how, how have you seen your guys kind of respond to those, those challenges? Yeah, it, it's tricky, right? Because all the fields are going at once. And so number one, the, you got to be on, on the same page defensive staff wise. It gives a, the coaches a chance to, to put their spin on the defense. You know, they're calling it. So it's really good training to be a coordinator as well, you know, for the coaches. And then for the players, you really get a chance to see who knows what they're doing and who doesn't. Because you may have a guy who's played, you know, a thousand snaps in with a freshman or first year guy who may not know what to do. So there's got to be some extra communication there. So we're, 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 we're really keen on on watching who can communicate the right way, who can who knows what they're supposed to be doing, but also coaches wise, you know why they're calling certain things and stuff, and it's 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 good training for everybody. How do you balance that, Tony, um, with the time that you would want to have in the spring to have, say, like your top secondary on the field at the same time, or your top group of three or four linebackers? It's a good mix right now because early in practice we have those periods where, hey, it is the guys that are anticipated, you know, based off of performance and all stuff, ones together running around in nine on seven or seven on seven. And then when we go to that, you know, where everybody's mixed in with everybody, now you get a chance to see who's going to lead a group. You know what I mean, so you're getting a good mix of both right now. So it's just a matter of, of us being, being uh, really consistent with making sure they know what the standard is, right? Because whether you're a first year player or you played a thousand, and snaps there's a standard that uh, we got to continue to set and and really the players uh, uh making sure that those guys make it live is, with all of us spread out you know, i mean you really get a chance to see uh the, the players take hold of it I mentioned number one defense in the country i don't know if you guys are talking about that actively but what does that look like how do you take your group to the next level when last year they were pretty darn good in a lot of a lot of games well uh, again uh, you know i, I said this the, from day one, and I'll say it until the end of the season, is that th this group of guys, they haven't done anything. Th this group together, like, we have not done anything yet. So it's like building a building. You know, it starts with the little things and making sure, again, they know what to do, they know how to do it, and then reinforcing. Not only not only pl uh, coach to player, but player to player. You know, Giff, Ty, uh, um, Makai, Javen, I mean, Quez, those guys have played a lot of ball. You know, they this is the second year here with us and stuff. They 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 know they know what's up. So now it's uh, we're trying to trying to make them take hold of it, take leadership, and then wherever they go on their fields, really bring that to life. You know what I mean, and so um, you know that that's the goal. We we do we want to be the number one defense in the country. But you know all that is words until guys guys adopt it and they live it every day. You followed the, the rule change that could happen where you could have unlimited assistant coaches. Mm -hmm. um, if that passes, I mean, how much will that change what you'll be able to do to have more kind of hired coaches on the field? And how much have you thought about just some of the opportunities that you could have on your staff if this goes into effect? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I haven't thought about it as much just because I, I know like last year they were talking about it and all of a sudden the, the, the rule gets nixed. I know coach, coach has really been keen on it and, and saying, you know, we got to – we got to keep track of who you want where and what we're going to do in terms of all the guys we have now and how they can help position wise. But right now, until it until it goes by, like it is all what we're doing right now each day. So I I'm, I haven't really put as much focus into it. Yeah. Tony, who are you seeing other than Tommy Hill at, at that cornerback spot? Um, who are you working in at the, on the on the other side? What 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 guys are, are standing out? A lot, of, a lot of guys are 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 working in there. I would I wouldn't say anybody's standing out per se. I mean, you got Bly Hill over there. Uh, we're getting Malcolm some reps out there. Uh, you know, you got Ethan Nations out there. You got uh, I'm trying to think here of everybody who's taking reps. I mean, we put Mario Mario Buford out there. I mean, we're 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 moving everybody around out there. You know, again, the it's not so much posi what position they play; it's what they can do. You know, and so so whatever the combination of five best defensive backs are, then we'll put those guys on the field and, and figure it out. So we're we're just we're just figuring out who who can walk out there. I mean, you got uh, Jeremiah is out there. I mean, obviously. So it's just who is the most consistent, who can make the plays, who can communicate, and who's going to live up to the standard. Coach, what are your thoughts on the inside linebacker group? Uh, it's a good group. I mean, you have some experience. you got some athleticism. Uh, they know what to do. So uh, it's fun It's fun to watch those guys, especially, again, when we break up into those teams. Now 
you're you're getting them out of their comfort zone, right? You're you're having a, an older guy with a guy who does not necessarily know what he's doing. So now he's taking on dual roles. Hey, I have to execute. I got to know what I got to do. I got to make a tight call. I got to know where the back is. But now he's got to turn around and communicate with the guy who he's not used to doing it with. So you're putting a little pressure on him, rightfully so, right? They they know they know what's going on. They know how we want to do things around here. So. Um, it's important that that you get those combinations, so that way it gets them out of their comfort zone. It keeps them growing, keep, and helps them better understand what they're doing and what the guy next to them is doing. So, uh, it's a good group, good competition in there with uh, with Makai. Vincent Shavers is looking good. I mean, uh, Javen has 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 really come on and, and started to be really physical. Love that. Uh, Dylan, you know, Dylan Rogers, giving him a chance to show what he can do. He's a big, fast, strong guy. Uh, Steph is Steph is in there. I mean, so you got a, you got a really good group of guys who who I, I like their attitude. So it's more so just keep on growing every day. How much, Steph, how much has a, how much has a um, Stephon been to the to that room in general? Just considering where he came from and his knowledge of the defense. And yeah, I mean, he, he knows what to do. I mean, it's just again for him. There's a there's there was just a different standard, right? He, from from where he came from to now, it's just a different standard. Period. And so he's getting accustomed to it and. You know, the more he's around, the more he sees, the more he's on the grass, the more you can see the playmaker in him. So now we just got to mirror it up with him, making sure that he understands the way we do things here. Yeah. When you have a, a defensive line that has so much depth, um, how can it, and versatility, how can that help maybe change the way that you're able to call a defense if you have that many different kinds of players and that many players to use? Yeah, you heard Pot Rose, right? He was in here before me, right? I mean, he he is, I tell you what, I got, I got so much respect for Coach uh, T. Knight because um, – you see how close those guys are, and you see how he coaches them, and you see, uh, you, you watch practice, and you see he's always constantly moving guys around, you know, trying to trying to get the best fit, seeing where guys where guys uh, uh, can operate the best. So when you got a D line like that, that that not only they know what they're doing, but they can they can plug in else other other spots. I think it really really helps you in terms of matchups. You know, putting guys over guys that you're saying, hey, I know this guy can beat this guy. I know this guy can beat this guy. So it's a it's an experiment now though, because again, you know, you you have the talent there and they know what to do. But every day, I mean, every day it's like game day around here. I mean, for practice when we're practicing, it's that intense. It's that physical. Um, the standard is 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 not what it was last year, so um, guys are moving around, and 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 we got to watch the tape to to give them justice on on how they're doing. You know what I mean? Just talked a little about Nash, and, and so did Coach Rule last week. Um, what's your perspective on everything he's done to change his playing style, his body this off season so far, and, and just kind of his desire to want to be out there at practice when you guys are trying to throttle him back? Yeah, yeah. Like that's that's OU right there, man. That that young man, and and you know, glad that that his father, you know, had the surgery and he's doing he's doing well. And uh, you can see Nash returning back here with the guys and just just he's just living, man. He's just having a great time. You know, you really you really enjoy when he walks into the meeting room when he walks onto the floor and you 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 just do that much better like he just he's just a guy that you really want to work for you know what I mean and so him being in in great shape you know he he jokes around that he's you know he's a pass rusher now and all this kind of craziness and all that stuff but uh um you know he's just he's just bare man he's just low maintenance he's blue collar and he just he just wants to get better and he wants to lead. So it's fun to watch him again in these groups when he's not getting as many reps, but you you turn over there and look and he's talking to guys and he's coaching guys and he's doing that kind of stuff. So he's uh, he's 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 doing all right. You talked about some of your older guys taking the reins. How has Tommy Hill transformed when you think about like a year ago at this time to maybe enter into that group of guys you want? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, he's a perfect example of the the standard being changed, right? I mean, you go from where he was in the beginning to where he ended. So now, you know, there's a different expectation of him, right? There's, um, I mean, we got on him, we got on him for for not running to the ball as well as he could. Now that last year might have been okay. You know what I mean, but this year it's it's totally different because now he he set the bar. He showed everybody what he can do, right? And so if you want to be one of the best DBs in the country, then we're going to hold you to the standard, period. So when you're not doing that, then you're going to get you're going to get barked at. So again, with him, he's a perfect example of the standard being raised and every single day you live up to it or you don't. And so um, but he's he's doing well. 
corners are you have Bly Hill, and then you have yeah. Ethan Nation, and those oh, two guys yeah. are not the same oh, size, uh, right? So like, twins. Have you seen the movie Twins? Arnold Schwarzenegger, Danny DeVito. Yeah, it's like that. Like, hi. How do you like? How do those different skill sets work together? Like, how how do you how do you coach maybe those guys a little bit differently based on their size? And their yeah, the, the, again, a, again, you go back to the staff and Coach Coop putting those guys in different positions. I mean, um, uh, with Bly, you know. It, He's a guy who has all the talent there is. I mean, he's. I mean, he is all of six three, somewhere right in there, six three, six four. He's got movement skills, um, doing things, getting used to the way things are being uh, being done here. But Coop has done a great job working with him, as well as all the DBs, and and really messing around with playing them in the boundary, playing them to the field. You know, sometimes just left and right, moving guys around around them. You know, what I mean, seeing what he can do. That's what the spring is, right? Is seeing what these guys can do turning them loose and then saying, okay, you fit best here. I mean, so it's not necessarily like a guy is stuck like Bly uh, in a certain spot. We're just trying to see what he can do. I mean, it drills, that's cool and all. Uh, you know, indies, guys catching balls, that's cool and all. But they got to line They got to line up. They got to line up at 707. They got to execute. They got to put themselves in a position to make a play, and they got to go make a play. And so that's the thing we're seeing with, with those guys, those transfer guys or those guys that, that, that need to play ball. You know, those maybe those freshmen that redshirted. We're, we're trying to get them in a position to, to see, can you do it? Can you make plays? I mean, DeAndre Barnes is in that category. Uh, you know, really good athlete, good football player. Uh, need to see what he can do. Dylan Rogers, a linebacker. You know, there's some, there's some talent there, but now it's time, right? It's their time. So let's go play some ball. Tony, how is spring season different for you? No, spring season number two different for you as opposed to last year when you guys were so focused on installing your system. Yeah, it was crazy. Sure. Like, uh, last night, literally, I was talking to Rob about that. You know, I – I asked the defensive staff, I was like, man, are we any good? Like, I, I don't know right now, you know, if we're any good. And they're like, coach, we're doing stuff now that we were doing at the end of the season last year. So it's, it's not even close in that regards. But, but Coach Rule said it best, you know, it's not necessarily what you do, it's how you do it. So how are we running to the ball? You know, how are we taking on blocks? How are we tackling? You know, those are the things that, that necessarily now – Instead of teaching it, you're just holding the standard right there, you know what I mean, and showing them every day. And so yeah, I think it's turned away from the X's and O's part of it, even though we're installing still in the plays, but it's now more so of how we do things and making sure every single guy that takes that field and lines up and understands that there is a way we are going to play defensive football here, period. Starts with the head man. You heard, if you, if you were out there, you heard him barking at the defense from the get-go, you know what I mean? There's a way we're going to do things on defense, and I think you're seeing more so of that being being the emphasis, not necessarily the X's and O's part. Have you found yourself in the past when you've been getting started with a defense, whether it was in the spring or the fall, asking that question, wondering if, if you were any good, or is that maybe an indication because you asked that question that you actually might be pretty good? No, no, no. It, 100%. It's 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 because like it's it's so hard, right? It's so organic with all the different teams and all the different movements. Sometimes I haven't I haven't felt the that the first unit, the so-called first unit right now together. I haven't heard the communication. I haven't felt them run to the ball. I haven't felt the execution like that, but we, we're all over the place. Like, so, so I've seen individual performances. I've seen, you know, in the nine on sevens, the seven on sevens and the one on ones, but that's where the other part of practice comes into play that when they are together, that, that we need we need more from those guys. I need to feel the communication. I need to feel them running to the ball. We as a defensive staff need to see that come to light. You know what I mean? So, um, again, but that goes back with the expectations on those guys. You're going to have a lot of recruits coming through here for the next month or so. Hmm? Next three months. But um, especially in the next month, they're going to be able to watch practice. What do you think they're going to see and like about the way that you guys play defense? And I, I think that, yeah, I think they, they're going to see the attitude. You know what I mean? They uh, – they're going to see the players. I think it's one thing when the coaches talk about it, but when when they're off to the side, they're going to see the players really. I mean, that, that's the one thing I, I truly I truly enjoy being around these the, the young men is that they they do they believe in it. I mean, you can see them walking around. That's not how we tackle. That's not how we run to the ball. That's not how we punch at the ball. You know, the things that we're trying to really emphasize and get better at. You know, that's going to take us to the next level as well. So um, I think you can feel those guys, they want to be good. And they know we can be, but now it's just us giving them the tools, number one, and then us holding them to the, keep keep holding the standard true, so. All good. All right. Appreciate it, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.